My name is Ignacio Gomez. Um, I'm the EMEA Cloud Application Platform Lead um, for SUSE. I, I guess what that means is uh, I, I work with customers and partners to kind of help them on the uh, Cloud Foundry journey. And I'm going to be talking about kind of, you know, how we're bridging Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes together. Um, so be, be, being in The Hague, you know, I kind of saw, the, saw this slide, but because I'm a massive um, MC Escher fan since I was a kid, I kind of decided to use, you know, the fish and the birds. And, and, and I think the easiest way to explain it is when, when you speak to operators, they want to see fish. And when you speak to developers, they, you know, they, they want to see, that sounds bad, birds. Um, but, 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 but I guess it's, it's everybody wants, you know, wants to see what they want to see. You know, if, if you speak to your operators today, everybody's moving on to Kubernetes. And what SUSE has, have done is we've actually brought in the Kubernetes experience to Cloud Foundry, which is quite cool because everybody from a um, from 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 a operator perspective, they're running these Kubernetes platforms, and they don't want to be running a separate environment for Cloud Foundry. And what we've done is basically married the two, so the operators get you know that great um, Kubernetes experience, and the developers. The best part is they don't have to learn uh, Kubernetes because they can use Cloud Foundry. Um, we did a session in London about two months ago, and you know it was a room of, of about um, 250 developers, uh, mostly OpenShift developers. And we basically asked the developers, you know, who's working with Kubernetes. Everybody raised their hand, and then we asked, okay, how, you know, how many of you actually like working with Kubernetes? And except for the two Red Hat guys, <laughs> everybody kind of lowered their hand. So, 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 you know, it, it is resonating. Um, I, I think with, with customers, we we have now, you know, a lot of interest in in this kind of platform, and we've done some interesting releases. So, uh, back in April at the Cloud Foundry Summit in Philadelphia, we we basically launched Irene as a technical preview. And we were, so we're the first distribution who actually launched a completely 100% uh, native Kubernetes platform. Again, the developers don't care, but the operators are like, oh, okay, that, that actually sounds quite cool. I can have one platform, just manage one platform, and it's, and it's quite cool. Um, the other thing is we, you know, SUSE is a very open, open company, we say. And, and basically what that means is you can run our Cloud Foundry basically on almost any Kubernetes platform out there. It just needs to have, you know, certain updates and, and, um, and versions. But we've got it running basically on almost any Kubernetes you can throw at us, which is, which is quite good. Um, and the other thing that's actually also kind of bridging that gap is we now have the ability in Stratos to not only manage all of your Cloud Foundry deployment, whether that's SUSE, whether that's with Pivotal, whether that's your upstream version um, running on-premise or in the cloud or anywhere, you, you can also manage your uh, Kubernetes um, um, containers from that same console, which is quite cool. Which actually kind of builds on to what we just announced um, yesterday, which now we have what we call the Helm UI, which is in technical preview. So basically, you can um, deploy any Helm chart onto Cloud Foundry directly from Stratos, from the Stratos UI. So you just publish that um, and you point to it, you point to your repositories, and, you can, and, and that's actually quite cool and, and, um, and powerful. Uh, the other thing is we made it a lot easier for application scaling. So you just set your parameters on how you want your application to scale uh, within the Stratos UI, and your application kind of goes and, and, and does it. So a lot, you know, we're kind of reducing that um, management overhead and we're giving the operators a lot of, um, a lot of ability to, to um, kind of manage it in a lot easier way um, than previously. And, and, and the last one, which is, which is really, really cool, is you can now deploy on GKE, on AKS, and on EKS using Terraform scripts. And you can have a fully functioning Cloud Foundry deployment with about three um, VMs in a Kubernetes cluster and the deployment time takes about 30 minutes. So with most customers who we've talked about that, they're like, what, 30 minutes to get a full deployment on three virtual machines? We're like, yep. So basically we've significantly lowered the bar to get customers and partners up and running on these kind of platforms. So basically, if you wanted to test this out today, here are a few nice links. Uh, the first one is um, our Cloud Application Platform website. It talks about our Cloud Application Platform at Suzy, what we're doing, what, where you can now uh, deploy um, Cloud Foundry directly on Kubernetes. Um, if you're asking the question, there's no more Bosch. 
Some people say that's a great thing. Some people are like, okay. Um, we've also, uh, you know, kind of launched the release note. So everything I just said in a lot more detail because I only have five minutes. And if you want to do a one-click deployment on Amazon Web Services and you already have an Amazon um, account, just um, Google Cloud Application Platform, AWS, and there's a quick start guide. Um, I'm in sales and it took me about five minutes to figure it out and click it and it works and I was able to launch the environment. So um, it's, if, if I can do it, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you guys can do it. And basically that's it. Thanks.